preach one six hours this morning. If I preach six, please have the oxygen tank close by. <laughs> Amen. We're just glad you're in the house of the Lord. But um, the thought that the Lord has given me for today. Is the voice of the king is in this place. And in Solomon's day, when he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, that book is, you know, it's called The Preacher. But in Solomon's day, a king's word was the final thought. Come on now. Nobody could overrule the king. Come on now. But whatever the king said, that's what happened. Yes. Yes. So we're going to read Psalms 29, start with verse 1. It says, Give unto the Lord, all ye mighty. Yes, Give unto the Lord glory and strength. That's what your book says. Yep. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Oh, God. Yes, yes, yes. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Now, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful.
power in this room. There's power in your, your vessel as a believer. you got to understand that th there's power in the Word of God alone. And, and the Bible is not man's book, but it's God's book. And it's power in that book. You can read it in that book and all of a sudden begin to find something in you is beginning to change. Because it is a life-changing book. Because that book is the Word of the King.
Try to convince you, ain't no way it's never gonna happen. Try to persuade you, just give up. They're like Job's wife, just curse God and die. Just give up, don't even fight, it ain't worth the fight. But honey, I ain't never held on for nothing that weren't worth it. Because when God brought it, it was better than I could even begin to imagine. It was awesome. Oh, y'all can't ride with me, I pray for you. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the word and about the power of the king's voice. The first thing I want to talk about is that the voice of God initiated the creation of the world. So if he ain't got no power in his voice, how in the world can he create out of nothing? The Bible says, let there be. And he said, that's what God said, let there be, and it was. Let there be light, and there was light. And the Bible said God commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. Hebrews 11, 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were are seen were not made of things which do appear. So I'm here to tell you, you better get some word deep down in your belly. So when the adversary brings whatever he wants to bring to you, you can simply say, the word says, or the Bible. My saying is, the Bible says. And I believe in that right there. The Bible says. And if the Bible says it, I can camp right there. Y'all don't believe, read your Bible. And behold, there came a leopard and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if I will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. All Jesus said, I will be thou clean. So for some of y'all, I come to tell you this morning, that stuff you keep asking God about, he's already told you, I will. I will. Just hang on here. things, you know, you didn't want to touch it. But Jesus wasn't afraid because he was, he was the king and he had power. And when he touched it, that thing had to go. I will be thou clean. So those situations in your life that you don't even know how to handle, you don't want to touch them. Y'all don't worry. Just say, Lord, if you will. Lord, I know if you will. Hallelujah. His answer this morning is, is I will. Oh it's in turn when the dying servant knew Jesus could, could heal him. Just by his word. Matthew said, Matthew 8, y'all find me. Matthew 8, 5 says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Amen. The centurion said, Listen, there ain't no worthiness in me. But I know good and well if you'll just speak a word, it'll be all right in my house. Yeah. I wonder, have you heard the word of the Lord? Yeah. Do you know what God is really saying about your circumstances? Yeah. I'm not saying that 
what was happening that was not real. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the authority he's given us is much stronger than what we recognize. So we don't always exercise what he's been given. You understand? Yes. Matthew 8, 16, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. His word. His word healed them. Yeah. Psalm says he sent his word and it healed them. Yeah. And he's still speaking to devils right now, yeah. even this morning. Yeah. If you come in with a little cloud on your back, over your shoulder, yeah. he's still speaking yeah. the word right now. Yeah. Don't you know, even the devil had to ask permission in one story. Uh, and, and he said, well, why don't you come to us now for? Did you come to tempt us, torment us, whatever? Uh, and you know what? He said, listen, uh, can we go into that herd of swine that's over yonder? He had to ask permission uh, to do what he did. Oh, you yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, they can sit down, but we ain't got nothing to feed them. That's an everyday story. Right. I'm taking it out of my, my way of telling it. And, and I can see their eyes like, uh, we ain't got nothing here. Oh, wait, there's a little boy up yonder. Yeah. He's got some loaves and right. fishes. Yeah. Jesus said, well, tell him, bring them here. Bring them right here. Come on. Amen. Yes. Yes. Are you kidding me? Did you see how many people was here? That boy ain't got that much. He's got five loaves and two little fish. I call them sardines. Are oh, they two little fish? Oh, the little fish I really recognize as them sardines and them cans. You know, they kind of nasty. No, no fish. All y'all that likes them, it's okay if you like them. I just don't. Think I want none. <laughs> so, but here, here, here you are. That you got five thousand. The Bible says men, right. not counting women and children. <laughs> and you got five little loaves for a little boy's lunch and two fish. He said, "Tell him sit on the grass." And then he just looks up. Uh -huh. The Bible says he took it. Right. He blessed it. Yes. Yes. He broke it. Yes. And then he gave it. Yes. Right. So that's the same process for your life as well. Amen. He'll receive you. Yes. He'll bless you. Yes. He will break you. Yes. And then he'll give you back to the world. Yes. That's the real truth right there. Yes. But isn't it great to know that he's a multiplying God? Yes. And even after you've been broken, you're sufficient to feed the multitude. Sleep. Yes. 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 Let me tell you, somebody else went home and sleep. That was Lisa. Yes. Oh. Yes. 
Aunt Lisa called me. She said, Pastor, I've been so I can't sleep. She called me the next morning when she finally woke up about 9 o'clock. She called me. She said, Pastor, I did what you said. I went home and I took three deep breaths and I went to sleep. I slept all night. And I, I just got up and I just want you to know that really worked. The way of the word of the king is there's power. Well, that's the way the world is about now, too, about naked. That's the country way, naked. I was raised old school, and it's hard to get that out of me. It's probably never going to come out of me, to be honest. But I, I'm not going to pick on any of that. I'm just representing the stuff you see. I mean, you got eyeballs, you see. That's right. But I still want to be light in the darkness. Yes. Yes. So, um, but Peter's on the boat, and, you know, here comes this, looks like a ghost walking. Yeah. We weren't really sure what right. that might be. That's right. All of a sudden, he said, Lord, right. if that is you, if that, if that Peter, is you. Yes. Yes. And Peter answered him, said, Lord, if thou... If it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, some of you, the reason you can't get some of those miracle breakthroughs is because you're not willing to step out of the boat. Amen. Yes. You're not willing to step out of your comfort zone. You're not willing to step out of that place of familiarity. And what God wants to do is to take you in a place you've never been. And he wants to prove to you that he can hold you. His word can hold you up. Some people make all kinds of little stories. Well, they must send rocks up under the water wherever Peter stepped. I can't know, but I do know uh, he did uh, begin to sink when he took his eyes off of Jesus. Uh, what I can say, though, uh, is that the word has him up when he stepped down. And you've got to believe that God's word will hold you up as well. You've got to believe that no matter what's out there facing you, uh, that if God bids you to come, you can take a step and get out of the boat uh, and his word will hold you up. Uh, you don't have to worry about what's going on around about you, uh, but keep your eyes on him uh, and then you'll be able to walk safely. Uh, you'll be able to arrive safely. Uh, you'll be able to get through safely. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're saying around as long as you heard him say come and you believe his word hallelujah God if I could preach this like I feel it God would bust this house open you don't need to lie that's the raw truth the voice of the Lord stopped the funeral I told Minister Phillips and Linda both, I said, now y'all can die if you want to. I said, but Jane will stay dead. Amen. I told him, did I tell you that? I said, you check out if you want to. But I'm going to stand right your cast you're going to have to get that up. Uh, I'm just trying to prove 
prove to you that there's power in the word of God where the king's word is there's power there and we've got to take that for whatever God's trying to work in our lives and say okay God I may not understand this but one thing I do know you're working something in this situation for my good Jesus I'm sorry it's hot in here I can't control that I don't know what we're going to do about it, but we're going to do something next. <laughs> we're going to do something about that. Yes, we are. I'll give y'all some nap because you can wipe your sweat. <laughs> I'm such a sweet, caring person. <laughs> I'm almost there. I really have too much fun preaching now. Some accidents you get over. You just, you just relax and go with it. You don't you ain't trying to impress somebody. You don't care if nobody likes you, don't like you, you just don't care. And I, I'm somewhere around that age, you know, I'm going to be 64 in a little while. And I'm kind of at that place where I just say what I hear the Lord say and it just got to fall where it falls. That's the truth. Amen. So I'm going to tell y'all something straight up. That glory conference is starting this coming Friday. Yes. Hear me well. Don't be focused on a feather. And don't be focused on gold dust. And don't be focused on kind of some kind of stones falling out of heaven. Or rubies or diamonds or whatever they call them. Don't be worried about nobody getting gold teeth. And don't be worried about none of that kind of stuff. But what you're going to focus on is that the sick come in and they go out of your here. You're going to focus on Hallelujah, no matter what the circumstances are that brings them, they're going to go out of here delivered and set free. They're going to go out of here changed for eternity. Now, if the Lord wants to drop a feather, that's his business. But I'm not worried if I never see a feather. I tell you, I'm terrible shy. I want to see the manifested glory. come and said she's already dead already. and Jesus said fear not believe on me right. and she shall be made whole right. so even though you get afraid sometimes when you're going through right. this word fear not Amen. believe on me Amen. believe on me Amen. Don't, don't pay attention to their symptoms but believe Amen. on me Amen. believe on me that every bone is in its place Amen. believe on me that there's the right right cushion between every every working joint. Uh, believe only that the cartilage is in its right place. Believe only uh, that it works like it ought to work. Believe only. Uh, and he said, don't be afraid. Because when you can't hardly get around and you got issues of life, uh, fear would like to creep in on you. Then the next thing he said in 52, and, and he went to the house, and, and when he walked in the house, everybody was crying, and he said, weep not. She's not dead, but sleeps. And then they laughed 
looked at him. Uh -huh. He threw their hines out. <laughs> the Bible says they left him to score, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out. I didn't make it. Yeah. He put them out. Yeah. And took her by the hand and called, saying, May arise. Yeah. And sometimes you got to put them bowers yeah. and them naysayers yeah. away from you. says in John chapter 14 let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me for in my father's house are many mansions anyone see well you you one of them things he's working on called a mansion he speaks of you up I know that's a little far fetched son it's all right you'll be all right in a hundred years you won't remember I said that please just yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm at. I'm on a whole other page somewhere today. I can't, I can't get it together. Timmy, I want you to come here, please. I'm sorry, but I want you to stand here in front of this church right here. Amen, yes. I want you to look at the people. And this is my baby boy. And he wants me to tell him every day that he's my favorite of five children. <laughs> and I tell him I'm not saying that. I love all five of them. <laughs> but he don't ever give up. He's, he's relentless in that right there. Never, never give up. But this morning, uh, I want you to stand on your feet. Just get out there and don't be afraid. Amen. Fear not. For <laughs> <laughs> I am with you. <laughs> okay, you all right now? There are many things that in ministry, and Timmy's being, being trained to be in ministry, yes. and uh, I'm not easy to handle. Mm -hmm. And I can take the, the wind out of your sails in two sentences. Yes, Probably won't even take two. Just take a look in my eyes. Mm -hmm. But the Lord spoke to me sitting in this chair. Bless your father. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your father. And I teach him to keep that precious Jesus face and not show the storms of life. Right. I teach him that he has to lead by example. Amen. I teach him. Mm -hmm. You don't have nasty attitudes and so on and so forth. If you do, you're not ready Amen. for ministry. Right. I say a lot of things to him that I'm sure he wish I'd go and leave him alone. Amen. But I'm not going to leave him alone. Amen. So he just got to hear it. Amen. But this morning, the Lord said that he needed to be undergirded. Amen. Jesus. Uh -huh. Glory. There are things that are going on in each of us that we have no clue on. So you can't look at somebody and decide what they're really dealing with. That's true. And see, some of y'all, when y'all y'all jump on him, y'all don't understand. I've probably done a whipped him about 40 times before you got to him. And so it's a bit much for him to handle. That's real. Because he feels like that he's always doing wrong. Bless you, Lord. Amen. God. Amen. All right. Listen and touch your father. Are you good? Okay. I'm going to obey the Lord. Right. Amen. Yes. The Lord told me to pray for him. Yes. yes. Amen. The Lord told me to strengthen him today. Yes. The Lord told me to undergird him today. Yes. Because the adversary would like to discourage him to the point that he never would want to preach again. He's 21. He's, he's not 63. You can't make him me. No. No. Somebody gave me time to develop. Amen. Yes. They kept letting me preach until I actually could learn how to talk a little bit anyway. 
it took me a long time to try to make a preacher, whatever that's about, what all that is. But if you love him, you need to pray for him. Because the onslaught of the adversary, will dis the strongest tool the enemy has is discouragement. And if he can discourage you and make you feel you're alienated and you're all alone, then he will work you over and cause you to feel like you have no purpose and there's no reason for you to keep living. But I've come to serve notice on that spirit that keeps coming to attack him. We strengthen him now. We strengthen him now. We strengthen him now. 